of Lake Washburn? Yes, the battling senator back home to stay. Hello there, Blake. Hello, Bob. The defeated senator come home to lick his vote. Play off him, Abbott. What do you say we bury the hatchet, Blake, now that the election's over? Say, the voters didn't seem to fall for that motto of yours, did they? The people's choice. This election's over, but remember, there's another one in two years. Blake, is that you? Hello, Leo. You got your cab here? Sure, right here. What happened? I just said hello to a campaign manager. Happy birthday, Blake. Hmm? You had a birthday last week, fella. Happy birthday. Oh, yeah, thanks. How'd you remember that, Leo? I haven't forgotten a thing since I took that memory course three years ago. How'd you happen to take a memory course? When I was in high school, I just couldn't remember a thing. So I figured if I was to get anywhere, I'd have to remember things. Now when people here in Fairfax want a cat, the first one they call them is me. Because they remember I remember things like their birthdays, their favorite color. McFarland Packard just got a new paint job. So I see. Well, John McFarland's really dressing it up. It looks real good. Probably celebrating his son's being elected state senator. Blake, I wouldn't worry about not being reelected if I were you. I won't. Well, politics is a funny thing. Sometimes the voters like it, and sometimes they don't. <laughs> Tore down all those posters. What'd you give him that clip on the chin for? Just to let him know how I feel about his campaign tactics. Campaign tactics? Sure. The people were hoodwinked into voting for Bob McFarlane. I don't know. I don't think I was hoodwinked. What do you mean? I voted for him. Too sure, Mother. Blake! Oh, Blake, you scamp! <laughs> Why don't you tell your mother when you're coming home? You know how surprises always surprise me. Blake! Blake! Katie, how are you? <laughs> oh, Blake, you shouldn't have come home. Hmm? I haven't finished your present yet. Oh, but I have one for you. Flowers are lovely, Blake. What's this? That's an orchid for Janice. We're going dancing tonight. I'll have to keep it fresh for you. I'll put it in the refrigerator. What's his name? He has no name. You'll have to name him.
Jake. You back in town to stay? Hello, Jimmy. Yes, I'm back to stay. Well, that's politics. Let's sit down, shall we, Blake? You want to, Janice? Yes, let's. All right. Hello, Blake. How are you? Hello, Gloria. Suppose we have dinner. Okay. Hey, your hair looks different. What have you done? That's a new dress, isn't it? Janice, you look wonderful. It's about time you noticed me. You've been so busy saying hello to all your old friends, you haven't had a minute for me. Oh, a fine lot of friends. You're imagining things. They're all glad to see you. They're glad to see me defeated. But there'll be another election. Mr. Haskins wants to see you personally. Now, Dudley, I want four pork chops browned slightly over the fire. Then put them in the oven for 15 minutes. Then take them back out, dust them slightly with pepper, sugar, and garlic salt. Then back onto the fire for five minutes. Did you get that? And uh, cherry pie a la mode for dessert. No salad? Of course, but let me fix my own dressing. Right, Mr. Haskins. Blake! Blake, hello. Hello, Slam. Blake, you snake. Why don't you tell a guy when you get back into town? How are you, Janet? Hi, Slam. What are you trying to do, keep your homecoming a secret? Now, don't you start, too. All right, start with. Oh, nothing. It's good to see you, boy. When do you come back to work? I'll be down Monday morning. Your Uncle Cliff hasn't done a lick of work since he knew you were coming back. He's waited a long time for his trip out west. Yeah. Every summer I worked for the Herald, Uncle Cliff threatened to skip out and leave me with a paper. You know, it's going to be like our college daily. Blake was the editor, I was a freshman reporter. We used to call him boss. How's the school mark? Fine. Still in the third grade. Really? <laughs> Welcome home, Senator. Hello, Don. Betty. Hello. Oh, stay where you are, Senator. No need to go into one of your long-winded speeches. <laughs> now, look here, Don. You two seem to be in a gay mood this evening. Why not? We're celebrating. Slim, how about a news item on us? We're married seven years today. Seven years, Betty? Sure, Janice. Don't you remember? We got engaged the same week you and Blake did. Come over and see us. Marriage is a wonderful thing. Let's go, Blake. Why? These people don't bother me. They do me. Oh, all right. You're not really going. Excuse us, Slim. I'll see you Monday at the office. Sorry, we're not eating. But you're eating, sir. I most certainly am. Didn't realize it's been seven years. Yes, it has. Five years in the Army and two years at the state capitol. I guess that's a pretty long time for a girl to wait for a fella. Yes. Why don't you drive my car home? I won't need it tomorrow. It's Sunday. No, thanks. I don't mind walking. Well, I think we better plan on getting married right away. I'm not sure I want to marry you, Blake. But Janice, what are you... Why? I think perhaps it's because I don't like being taken for granted. You expect me to be waiting here patiently for you and marry you when you're ready. But you know what I've been trying to accomplish before we got married. Things haven't worked out for us before. Yes, I know. I expected to be reelected, and we could have married and settled down in Capital City. I worked hard as senator. Because I happened to step on some toes, they kicked me out. The voters don't seem to realize they kicked out the man who has their best interests at heart. Getting into fistfights on the Senate floor isn't the way to get things done. I may have done it the wrong way. But all the things I was working for up there, I can still do, don't you see? Just because I wasn't re-elected isn't going to stop me. I think I know what the people want, and I can fight for them just as well being editor of the Herald. Blake, there isn't a person in the world who knows better than I do how sincere you are. And I know you're going to do great things with the paper. And you'll have faith in me and let me do things my way? Will you trust me? Of course I'll trust you. Blake, I know I haven't mentioned it in the last five minutes, but I love you.
your milk, Katie, if you want all your teeth to grow. Katie, so it's up to you to take care of it and see that you feed it before you go off to school. All right, Mother, I will. Oh, there's well, the Pumba. Pumba. I'll start him tomorrow. You feed him now, will you, Blake? Okay. Can I say hello to my future sister-in-law? What? Say hello to... Jana, she's my teacher. Oh, yeah, say hello. Hey, come back here. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye, Blake. Bye, Katie. Bye, Mother. Bye, dear. Bye. Drink your coffee, Blake, so you wake up. Well, when your wife complains about you reading the paper at the table, you'll have a perfectly good excuse. What's that, Mother? As editor of the paper, it's part of your job to see what the morning edition looks like. Did you see Janice last night? Mother, if any of your inquiring neighbors ask you, just say that Janice and I are going to be married almost immediately. Oh, Blake, I'm so happy for you. I, I almost feel like crying. Oh, no, Mother. Right. I'll save it for the wedding. We have just as many factories in this part of the country. We do. Mother, do you know if the McFarland plant dumps any refuse into the White River? Oh, Blake, I haven't the faintest idea. Be interesting to find out. Very interesting. saw the supply call twice. They wanted someone to pick up the cuts for Thursday, and I told him you would do it, Mr. Haskins. Well, a reporter, not an errand boy. What's the matter with Irwin? He went down to see us to see about a double page for the monthly sale, Mr. Haskins. Okay, I'll do it. How long do you have to work around here before you stop calling me Mr. Haskins? I always treat men with respect. Then they treat me with respect, Mr. Haskins. Is that a proven theory or something you're just trying out? Mr. Blake Washburn is looking for you. He asked for you two hours ago. What's he doing here this early? Doesn't he know we don't wake up until afternoon around here? He was here at 9 o'clock. Are you still keeping company with that Hubert guy? Yes, I am, Mr. Haskins. Just ask him. There's that Carol. Mr. Skaggs is out of Morning, time. Slim. Hi, Bernie. All right. Morning, Morning Slim. Slim. Blake's been asking for you. And thanks for calling, Reverend. Morning, Phoebe. Morning, Slim. They've been in there long? The old boy just got here. He's been saying his goodbye. Oh, I'll wait until they get through then. So where's that recipe you promised me for my cookery corner? I'll write that out for you. I get a byline? On my women's page? Not a chance. <laughs> Don't worry, Uncle Cliff. I'll answer those letters right away. Blake, I'm not going to give you a lecture on running a newspaper. I can't put more than four words together and make sense. You always manage to make yourself understood. Oh, you mean writing editorials. Well, that I can do. But making speeches always did scare the daylights out of me. So don't expect me to make a speech. <laughs> I won't. Just one thing. There's always a lot of joking about all I know is what I read in the papers. But, Blake, that's no joke. People really believe what they read. I know. In this country, the people expect to read the truth. See that they get it, son. I will, Uncle Cliff. And thanks for everything. No, no. Thank you for this trip I'm able to take now. I'll try not to send postcards. Thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Goodbye, Ken. 
Doc Cliff, don't stay away too long. Don't worry. Goodbye, Phoebe. Goodbye, Mr. Washburn. Goodbye, Bernie. Goodbye, Mr. Washburn. Have a good trip. Thank you, thank you. Goodbye, Slim. Goodbye, sir. And thank all of you for this wonderful present. Oh, you're, you're welcome. welcome. Goodbye, Hoagie. Goodbye, Cliff. Have fun. Yes, I will. Good luck, sir. Yes, thank you, Bill. Goodbye, Iris. Goodbye, Mr. Washburn. Morning, boss. Hello, Slim. I've got something to go to work on. Yeah? I'm going to crack down on the McFarland factory. You are? Yeah. The pollution of the river water. Now, wait a minute, Blake. I... Now, just let me do this my way, will you? You know any of the boys out there? Sure, I know Andy Butterworth. He's foreman of the chemical plant. He's our man. We'll drive out this afternoon and get the facts from him. Is this something you cooked up with Uncle Cliff? No, I didn't mention it to him. Ask Iris to come in, will you? Iris, boss wants you. you started on stream pollution. It's a problem all over the country. Factories dump their waste and acids into fresh water, something that should be controlled. Slim? Andy, I'd like you to meet Blake Washburn. Blake, this is Andy Butterworth. Hello, Andy. How do you do? Oh, you're the new editor. That's right. How are the kids? Fine, fine. I got another one since I saw you last. I have five now. Well, those gray hairs are deceiving. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Do you mind? No, no. Go ahead. Well, off the record, we won't quote you. How much refuse and acid does the plant dump in the river? Why, none. The factory's right on the river. You must dump some. No. The solvents are burned in the incinerator, and the acids are diluted and go on down to the sewage treatment plant. What goes in the river? Nothing. I know, because it's my job to see that the disposal rules are carried out. Isn't there anything thrown in the river? Not a thing. Is that what you wanted to know? Yes, that's what I wanted to know. Thanks very much, Andy. Give my best to Virginia, will you? Yeah, sure thing. Well, goodbye. Take Bye. it easy. We'd better get back. We got a paper to get out. What was the idea? I made a mistake. No harm done. You feel you must have a crusade? Our readers ought to be informed about the things business interests get away with. You mean John McFarland? How do you suppose his son got elected? Well, I had an idea the voters had something to do with it. They'll soon discover their mistake because I'm going to tell them with our little one horse paper. Uncle Cliff wouldn't like to hear you call it that. The Herald hasn't grown up with a town. A crusade will help circulation. Don't you think we ought to be a bigger newspaper? Sure, I'm all for that. Then maybe I'd get a raise. But let's not go off half-cocked, huh? What do you say, boss? Drink your milk, Rag. This is one all your teeth. Oh, Katie. Now, keep your coat buckled. Blake, when I get the list of all the pupils in my class, be sure you print every one. What? Didn't Slim tell you? I told him about our class going on the outing. He said he would write it up if I gave him the names of all the pupils. There's, There's a school, school bus. bus. And please see the names are spelled right, Blake. Now, don't worry. Blake will tell his printer. Bye, Blake. Bye, Katie. Bye. Bye, Bye Blake. dear. Bye, Rat. <laughs> I'm going to take Rats on her field trip. What was that all about? Well, Janice is taking her whole third grade for an outing next week to look at the ground. The ground? Well, you know, rocks, sand, and blossoms. 
the things they make us all study when we're eight years old. We won't find many blossoms this time of year. Well, I think it's to show them where the blossoms were last year and where they're going to be next year. Anyway, there'll be rocks. I'm glad the Herald's running an article about it. That should increase the circulation. Well, there'll be 25 children's names, and all their relatives will want papers to see their names in print. Your Uncle Cliff always said to your dear father, names make news. It takes more than that to make a newspaper grow. What we need is a crusade about something important, something big. on the radio this morning. That's an awful lot of money for one company to make. Yeah, I wish I had some of it. That's what causes your high cost of living. Some people sure have it easy making all that dough. Who gets all those profits? That's what I'd like to know. I wish somebody would tell me I work for one of them big outfits. That's more money than any of us will ever see. When did the item about Metro Manufacturing come in? Well, good morning, Blake. Why, first thing, I just put it in the window. The teletype's in your office. Thanks. AP for a complete text on the Metro Manufacturing item. Okay, Blake. Oh, Ken, save me the eight-column head. I was get the AP some coffee. the same subject? Yes. I suppose you know what you're doing. Of course I do. I'm printing a newspaper and giving the people what they want to read. Slim, see what you can find out about the companies in this state. Fairfax Valley Power, Tri-State Cement, McFarland Motors. Get the information on as many as you can. You're going to start on them, are you? Yes, I am. Did you know circulation is up 500 copies? Yeah, I know. I'm going to a tea. has got the right idea. He used to be state senator, didn't he? That's right. It's too bad he wasn't re-elected. He could do a lot of good up there. I think I'll write him a letter and tell him he ought to run again. <laughs>
These are the personal letters, Mr. Washburn. Thank you, Iris. Getting a lot of letters from your readers lately, aren't you, boss? Yes. I was out bowling with a few of the fellows last night. They were discussing this attack you're making on business profits. It was very interesting to hear their opinions. And? They asked me a couple of questions about why you were doing it, but I couldn't answer them. I really don't know. Blake, where are tomorrow till late for the deadline? Oh, Katie, deadline? <laughs> this has to be in tomorrow morning's paper. It's important. Hello, Slim. Hi, you, Katie. Our class goes on the outing tomorrow, and this has to be printed before it we go, or it won't be news. It's the names of all the pupils. All these names? You must print every one. It's important. Is it? I promised them their names would be in the Herald, and they've got to be. I gave my word. Why did you? I collected ten cents for each name. <laughs> hey, Katie. I'm going to give it to the Ray Cross. All right, it'll be in the tomorrow morning. Thanks, Blake. You're a nice brother. I have to go now. Bye, Slim. Bye, Katie. Bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye, Katie. Bye. <laughs> How about it, Blake? The town has a lot of confidence in you, but they'd like to see you take it a little easy. So would I. Concentrate more on local news. Stop going off in all directions. Here's some local news. Why don't you write that article? Okay, boss. Mr. Kenlock, I've got a news item about the third grade in Lincoln Grammar School. Do you think you'll have room for it? Babysitter, we just went to press. Blake, it's one o'clock. Oh, hello, Janice. Is it? You were going to meet me at Kay's Diner at 11.30. Oh, Janice. I'm sorry. <laughs> forgive me? Of course you'll forgive me. How about some coffee? That'll be ready by now. Mm -hmm. This one's with the sugar. Blake, tell me honestly. Are you just using this paper to get yourself back in the state senate? Yes, I am. That's why you've been doing all this crusading, to get to the people who might someday vote for you. What's wrong with trying to get votes? You said you were going to do some good with the paper. You asked me to have faith in you while you did it. I didn't know you were going to trick your readers into voting you back into the senate. Trick them? But I've been sincere about everything I've printed in the Herald. And because I have been, the people want me back in Capital City. You're not being very honest with yourself. You really want to show them you can come back after your defeat, don't you? But the people are with me. Don't you realize you were the victim of a mistake in the first place? You came home our most decorated war hero, and on that popularity, you were elected state senator. You were the victim of a mistake. Why do you say that? I heard the voters. I heard them talking before the last election. They realized their mistake. That's why they went to the polls and deliberately voted you out. I don't believe that. It's about time you did. You're a trained newspaper man and can be a good one. So stop trying to be a politician, something you're not suited for. But I've been doing all this for us. Don't you want to marry a guy who will amount to something? I want to marry the boy I used to know, not this fellow you're being now. What he's doing isn't the sort of thing I want to be a part of. I 
I'm going home, Blake. Good night, Slim. Good night, Janice. overboard taking cracks at our company. What do you mean, our company? Why don't you do something for that sour stomach of yours? Treat us all right, don't they? Oh, pipe down. Stop the foot of the hill, I'll put that sign back. Why bother? Nobody coming up here to Copper Hill. a truck driver. He owns four delivery trucks and he doesn't drive them. He's the boss. And I'm not going to get rid of him. I'm going to marry him. Congratulate him for me. Excuse me. I have to take letters to Mr. Washburn. I'll do it for you. Morning. Some more letters from your constituents, Senator. Look, Slim, lay off the cracks. You're getting a little tiresome. Aren't you a little touchy this morning? You're so eager to criticize newspapers. Why do you work for one? Who's criticizing newspapers? They stand or fall on their own merits. It's you. I'm just going after facts and printing them. Like the time you went out for some facts about the McFarland factory? I didn't find out anything. You found out the factory was not polluting the river. That was commendable. You didn't print that. I'd like to speak with you, Mr. Washburn. But if you two are busy, I can come back later. Mr. McFarland. John McFarland. May I come in? Oh, yes. Thank you. I thought I'd come down and have a little talk about something we're both interested in. What's that? The subject of your editorials. How's your tobacco holding out? Fine, sir. Here, you're welcome to it. Thank you. You're Slim Haskins, aren't you? That's right. We have a draftman at our shop. Talks a great deal about you. Dickerman. Yeah, we were in the same CB outfit. Uh-huh. I suppose you've come to talk about your son, the senator. No, I didn't. I'm not too concerned about him. He'll take care of himself. But I've been following your editorials very closely. Now, I know it's the duty of a newspaper to print the news. Of course, companies like Metro, Tri-State, and McFarland Motors, they are news. Of course they are. Especially their profits. That's right. And I'm interested in profits, both for myself and the customer. My main reason for coming here was to see if I could perhaps interest you in printing something about a pet theory I have. I call it profits to the customer. What do you mean? Well, as I say, it's my own private little pet theory. It's very simple, not very complicated. You see, I'm not an economist. I'm just a businessman. I have to make a profit to stay in business. Sure, we all know that. I make a profit on every electric motor I sell. But the customer must make a larger profit. Because if he doesn't, he won't buy my motors and I'm out of business. The customer must make a profit. That's right. Would you like to try my mixture? Oh, thank you, sir. Yes, the customer must make a profit. For example, you have some typesetting machines out there. The manufacturer who sold them made a profit on them. But your paper would never have bought them in the first place if they couldn't deliver something beyond their original cost. They must continue to work for your paper to be worth more to you than you paid for them. As a customer, that's your profit. My profit? Yes, you sell your newspaper to a man for five cents. 
He gets news, advertisements, and all kinds of information for his home and business. He gets service beyond the value of his five cents. As a customer, that's his profit. It's the same story with everything else. The light bulb, the refrigerator, the telephone. For this, we pay a few dollars a month. Our profits are enormous in steps alone. In case of an emergency, its value can't be estimated. That's a different slant from what we've been printing. As you say, that's just a theory. But you can't deny that you are big business. In your editorials, you've been insisting that because a thing is big, it's bad. It takes bigness to do big things. Our industries turned out equipment for our armed forces in a remarkably short space of time. It was a big job and it was well done. It helped us to win the war and preserve our country. That's what American industry with its bigness was able to accomplish. Was that bad, Blake? The last 50 years, we've come a long way. It used to take a week to get a letter across the United States. Now we do it in one day. The difference in time alone could affect the happiness of a family. It might even mean a matter of life and death. In my time, I've seen advances in industry that have added 20 years to the average span of life. My father died in the old country at the age of 40, an old man. His work was absolute drudgery, slavery, on his own farm from 5 o'clock in the morning to 8 o'clock at night. But because I live in America, I feel like a young man, and I'll be 65 in April. Mr. McFarlane, your tobacco makes mighty fine smoking. Why are you telling me all this? Well, I thought perhaps you might be interested in both sides of this profit question. Print something else for a change. Mr. McFarland, I don't tell you how to run your plant, so please don't tell me how to run my paper. I'll print my own conception of business profits. Good day, sir. Well, I just thought I'd come in and talk which I have. Remember, Blake, when this country was first discovered, there was nothing here. Now look around you. Everything you see is profits. Our transportation, communication, household appliances, medical equipment. Notice them sometime, Blake. They're the real profits. <laughs>
Okay, I'll bring them out to you. Here. What's this? I'm quitting. That makes it official. Oh, listen, Slim. Just because we took a couple of pokes at each that other... That isn't it. I just can't stay here and watch my best friend make a fool of himself. Look here, you're being the fool. Hello? Katie. Where? Where are you? At Copper Hill. Please, please hurry. All right, Janice. I'll be right there. Slim, drive me out to Copper Hill. Something's happened to Katie. What? She didn't say. to Control 1. Request bulldozer come to Copper Hill, Code 3. Control 1 to 103M. Roger. Control 1 to 108M. Contact bulldozer working in pass at south end of town. Need a doctor right away. Suggest nearest one is Dr. Johnson at McFarland Factory. We'll contact Dr. Johnson immediately. Is there anything you want? Do you need any men from the factory? Thanks very much, Mr. McFarland. The police have already sent for some equipment. Doctor, would you stand by, yes, please? Yes, of course. clearing away the front of the opening, and we'll get to her. Please stay here. Doctor, do you think... You better turn it around and back in.
she's alive, Mrs. Washburn, but I must make a thorough examination right away. Take her into the ambulance, please. Careful. Dr. Lee, the operation must be performed within two hours, or it'll be fatal. Ask him if it can be ready. Dr. Johnson wants to know if you can be ready in two hours. Yes, sir, I'll tell him. Dr. Lee will be ready in two hours. Can we get Kato to Capital City in two hours? Yes, yes, we'll take my plane. Come on. Tell Dr. Lee we'll be there. We're starting now. Thank you. Come on, let's get going. Come on. Thank you, Dr. This is Dr. Johnson. Dr. Johnson, I need a resuscitator at the airport right away. Thank you. in approach, runway 7R, wind 9015, out. Beach 801, Wilco, out. Taxi to south end of field where ambulance is waiting.
lady's fine, Mrs. Washburn. She's going to be all right. May we see her, Doctor? I'm sure it's all right. She's asleep, but she'll wake up any moment. We've taken her to a room on the floor below. This way, please. Well, that's some really good news, Doctor. Oh, this is Dr. Lee who performed the operation. How do you do, Doctor? Mr. John McFarland. This is Blake Washburn, the little girl's brother. Mr. Washburn, your sister's okay. It was lucky you were able to get her here in time. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Thank you. Oh, pardon. Well, well. One of my motors. It's a McFarland motor. Thanks again, Dr. Lee. Yes, thank you, Doctor. You've been threatening rain for three days. The new weatherman's a pessimist. Your front page ready? Here it is. Hello, Slim. Ken. Blake. Katie's still doing all right? Yeah, she's fine. I just talked with Mother in Capital City. That's good news. Thanks, Slim, for helping to save Katie. A lot of things help save her life. Yes, I know. Ken, what are you running in my column? Why, nothing. Hold it. I've got something I want to say. Still printing facts? You know, Slim, seven hours ago, John McFarlane came in here with a pet theory I didn't think was worth printing. Theories have funny ways of becoming facts. If you're looking for your letter of resignation, I'm typing on the back of it. Okay, boss. Slim, <laughs> well, I haven't heard you laugh like that in a long time. <laughs> Janice, how would you like to marry a guy who's glad to be editor of the Fairfax Herald? Oh, I'd like that. Hey, Rex, where did oh. you come from? Oh. Ah, ah. <laughs> You gotta learn to keep out of private offices. You've caused enough trouble for one day. 